start again and continue on with the letter of our Sheikh Bada Azubillah Min al-Shaytan al-Rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Aliki Yawm al-Din Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka na'sta'in Ahdina al-Surat al-Muftaqim al-Surat al-Ladhina a'lamta alayhim غير المعذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهاد إلى سمك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم يحمى الشيخ دريل نابي هذا المحضر والتعاطف بنظرة تعطيل نابي ظفر ما بعد المغر أخر حضراتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. so inshallah we're gonna continue on with the letter that we left off with last week due to time we didn't have enough time to finish off the letter. but just for those who missed out the letter that we were going over, Sheikh Ibrahim رضي الله تعالى عنه he just to give a recap he was talking about the importance of uh, following what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to follow. And he also talked about the importance of being diligent in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even when you reach the highest level, as he mentioned, as Sheikh Busayri mentioned or praised of his Sheikh, he says, قَدْ نَعْلَ غَايَةَ مَا يَرُمُ الْمُنْتَهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَلَهُ اجْتِحَادُ الْمُبْتَدِي He said that my Shaykh, he has reached the highest level of, of the path, of the, the one that anyone wants to reach. He has reached his highest level, and whenever you found him, you will see as if he was a beginner. So this Shaykh Ibrahim brought this poem, or this stanza, because he wanted to show the importance of even though you reach a high level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you still have to be steadfast on that path. As I mentioned the story of Sheikh Hassan last week, of the time when Sheikh Ibrahim who was on his deathbed, um, and Sheikh Ibrahim st strived and was struggling to do all of his acts of worship at this time, and Sheikh Hassan radiallahu ta'ala who told his father or his grandfather that you are excused and what did Sheikh Ibrahim respond to him he said it is by this that I have reached this level so how can I reach this level and I forget or I abandon it now so even when Sheikh Ibrahim who was still on his deathbed he still struggled to do his zikr or his obligations in which he obligated upon himself. Then after that he talked about following a sheikh and how the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also had a sheikh and all of the other people had a sheikh and he talked about you know making zikr. He also talked about the nafs of how we should fight our nafs and he brought the poem and he, he and he, he brought about the different types of nafs and he talked about as I mentioned uh, uh, the, the poem of Imam Busayi, Wajahidun Nafsa wa Shaitana, Wasihima, Wa Inhuma, Muhaddaq al Nusha, Fatahimi. He said that to strive against your nafs and the Shaitan, strive hard against them because for surely they are uh, uh, leading you astray. So be aware of those things. So we are going to continue on with the letter where we left off. Ibrahim says, فَالْمَعْرِفَةُ الْكَشْفُ عَنْ أَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَنَتِيجَتُهَا مَرَاكِبَةُ اللَّهِ وَإِخْلَاسِ الْأَمَرِ لَهُ فَعَلَيْكُمْ دَائِمًا بِتَأْمِيرِ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ بِآدَاءِ الْوُجُبَاتِ فِيهَا He says, so, ma'rifa, gnosis, to have gnosis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is what? coming to understand the different names of Allah and his different attributes and characteristics. And he says the result in having this knowledge 
or, or, or the result in this in doing these things leads you to what? Muraqabatillah wa ikhlasun amal ma'ahu. It leads you to the third level of ihsan, which is to witness Allah in everything that you are doing. As I talked about in the class last week about the fundamentals of tariqah, that the goal of tariqah is to what? I mentioned the word tariqah just means a path. It means a path. Now what does this path do? It's supposed to lead you to what? The third level of Islam, which is to anta'abudullah to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you are seeing him and if you haven't reached this level know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you so ma'rifah is to bring you the understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now some of the people say that there's a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فَعْرِفُونِي قَبْلَ أَن تَعْبُدُونِي وَإِن لَمْ تَعْرِفُونِي فَكَيْفَ تَعْبُدُونِي to come to Allah says to come to know me before you worship me if you do not know me how can you worship me now this is not something that I ever heard from Sheikh Mahi who I went over this book with or no I have heard our Sheikh our Shaykh meaning Sheikh Ibrahim refer to this as a hadith many people are saying it's hadith of Qudsi but I have never heard them saying that it is, it is an affirmed Hadith al-Qudsi, but I've heard many of the shuyukh of the tasawwuf mention this. So even though it, we don't know the authenticity of this, the meaning of it is still valid. Come to know me before you worship me. Because if you don't know who I am, how can you worship me? The meaning of this is very valid because if someone doesn't know the direction to a place, he must find someone who knows the way to get him to there. Nowadays we use our Sheikh Google or we use Sheikh G, uh, 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 Ways to find a way to reach our destination. We use a certain uh, 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 entity to help us get us to the actual place that we need to go. When we want to travel on the planes, we have a pilot who is going to, 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 to fly us to our destination. When you go on a ship, you have your captain. The same thing lies when you have something that is wrong with you or you need to find out something, you go to those, as Allah mentioned, in kuntum la ta'lamuna, ask those who are in, or the people of remembrance or the knowledgeable people if you do not know. So, Though this may not be an authentic hadith or hadith al-Qudsi, the meaning of it is still valid. So Shaykh Ibrahim said to have ma'rifah, it is to what? It is to bring you to the realization of your Lord through his attributes and through his different different manifestations. And the result of having this ma'rifah, the result of having this understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lead you to what? Muraqabatullah to witness Allah in everything that you do. To witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single thing that you do, what ikhlasul amal lahu, and to be sincere in doing your ibadah, and doing everything for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Ibrahim, he wrote in a poem, he said, how can I hate a human being when the eye that I look at the creation all I see is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Sheikh so Ibrahim, he had a different understanding and a different level. And this is what Ma'rifat is supposed to bring to you. He says, وَإِخْلَاسٌ أَمْلْ بِهِ and being sincere in your acts of ibadah and worship and doings for his sake alone. Dealing with the creation, dealing with yourself, dealing with uh, the, the, the trees, dealing with your, any, whoever it may be, and you have to be doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the one who acquires true ma'rifah. fiha. And also, he said it is imperative that 
you build the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi adabil wajibat fiha by establishing the obligations in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained upon you. Now, the best house of Allah is not the masjid. The house, the true house of Allah is what? Is the heart. That's why Allah says, Yawman mulayan fa umalun wa la bunun illa man atallahu bi qalbin salim. He said, day of judgment, and this day is a day in which Lion for Umalan, no wealth can benefit you. Wala banun, nor can any children will benefit you. Illa man atallahu bi qalbin salimin. Whoever, uh, only thing that can benefit you are the ones who come to Allah with a sound and clean and pure heart. So Allah also said that the seven heavens and the seven earths cannot contain me, but I fit in the heart of my believer. So the tariqah, zikr. As Allah mentioned, Allah bi zikr Allahi takma in al qulub that zikr, the remembrance of Allah, the heart will find tranquility. Also, it will eradicate it of its diseases. It will eradicate it of its darknesses. It will eradicate it and remove it of all of its, its sicknesses, jealousy, hatred, all of its type of uh, of things, the veils that is blocking Allah from what residing in our hearts. So people think that the masjid, we are in a pandemic, the masjids are closed. Yes, we want to go to the masjid, but remember, the best masjid is your heart. The best masjid is your heart. And if that masjid is closed, and if it is destroyed, everything else is destroyed, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned. That he said there is a morsel in the human body. That if this morsel is corrupted, the entire body, it is corrupted. And if it is the fix if it and if it is uh, um saluha and if it is good the entire body is good Allah wa al qalb and he said that is the heart so my brothers and sisters this dhikr the, those of you who follow tariqa tijaniya or whatever shazliya qadriya uh, 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 malamatiya uh, tistiya whatever tariqa you follow we all have one goal and that goal is to what? Reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To cleanse our hearts by through means of mentioning Allah. Through means of worshipping Allah through zikr. As Allah mentioned in the Quran, فَذْكُرُونِي azkurkum, Mention me and I shall mention you. Allah is giving us permission to mention Him. I am the sitting companion of the one who remembers me. فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا And mention Allah, an abundant form of remembrance. So Allah is inviting us to His what? Remembrance. So, that is what the tariqah is about. Shaykh Mahi, may Allah be elevate him, and he said, anyone, if someone asks you to take me to Allah, or if anyone asks me or asks you to take you to someone's house, don't take them to your house. And what if he said, What does that mean? That means if anyone is asking you, take me to Allah, take them to Allah. Don't take them to your nafs. And that's why Shaykh Ibrahim said, we have different type of shaykh, shaykhs. You have the shaykh that worships the murid, that worships himself. You have the shaykh that worships the murid. And you have the shaykh that worships Allah. The shaykh that worships, worships himself is the one who brings the murid to himself and don't bring them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have the shaykh who worships the nafs of the murid, meaning he doesn't want to to tell the murids the right things to do because he's afraid of what? That they may not give him money anymore. He's afraid that they may not help him. He's afraid that they may not, they may leave him. And he wants murids. So what does he do? He refrains from being a sheikh, a guide. And the guide is supposed to help you eradicate all of the sicknesses of your nafs. He should be able to differentiate and to distinguish what is wrong with you spiritually. 
And if he is not able to do that, then he is not a Shaykh al murabbi He's not someone who can bring you to your Lord. So, then Shaykh Ibrahim said, then you have the Shaykh who worships Allah alone. And these are the, these are the first two, they're not Shaykhs. But this is the real Shaykh. He doesn't worship himself, nor does he worship his murid. Whether the murid gives him or not, whether the murid uh, uh, whether the whether the murid, whether the murid likes how the sheikh advises him and guides him or not, he still will do what he is supposed to do because that is his job. His job is not to make the murid to like him. And in reality, when I was growing up with Sheikh Hassan, may Allah be pleased with him. There were days where Sheikh Hassan, I would come and he would greet me and he would say, Ahmed, how are you? How is everything? You okay? How is your family? And we used to stay together day in and day out. Many times I spent the night with Sheikh Hassan, massaging him from midnight to Fajr. Twelve, five hours straight, non-stop, for many nights. They were just me and him alone in the room. And I used to feel good about myself. And Sheikh Hassan, he knew this. And the one and, and sometimes when he sees my nuffs coming out. Or I'll be feeling myself, as we say, when I come to greet him, he'll give me the tip of his fingers, and I will feel so little. I will feel like I'm nothing. So, the reason we're mentioning this is because the sheikh, when the sheikh, when you want to see that affection from your sheikh, it's very dangerous for the sheikh to show how much he loves his murid. Because when the sheikh shows you that he loves you, it will block you from your journey to Allah. That's why it's very seldomly the sheikh will show you that he loves you. Or he will mention in a way that, or you will know that the sheikh loves you. Because when he, know, when he shows you that he loves you, your journey to Allah will, 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 start, to, will start to be hindered, it will be slowed down, because a lot of things you become laxated. You become relaxed. The sheikh loves me. The sheikh loves me. And the sheikh, it is a test for the sheikh as well. Because some of his murids, he loves them. But he has to be hard on them. Because that love that is burning in his heart, it should be for Allah and not for anything else. And he's afraid that if he loves them and he shows favoritism to you, you will be, your, your journey will be hindered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from time to time, Sheikh would make you feel, make me, I won't say you, but make me feel like there's no better murid than myself. And then there will be times when my nafs they start to, you know, get out of here, he will make me feel as one of the worst murids, which will help me humble myself. So the Sheikh should be able to what? Know how to bring you from darkness of ignorance into the light of understanding and knowledge. May Allah bless all of our shaykh and continue to guide them and elevate them. Ameen. So Shaykh Ibrahim radiallahu he said that فَعَلَيْكُمْ دَائِمًا بِتَعْمِيلِ الْبَيُوتِ اللَّهِ بِآدَاءِ الْوَاجِبَاتِ فِيهَا That you should build, it is imperative for you to build your houses or the houses of Allah with establishing the uh, obligations in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established upon you and as I mentioned the houses of Allah are the masajid yes but the best masjid of Allah is your heart so make sure we can have a million mosques but if our hearts aren't pure the mosque is no use Allah doesn't reside in the mosque Rather, it, Allah resides in the hearts of His believing servants. And if our hearts are pure, when we, if we pray in a room, it will be vibrant with Allah's presence. So, my brothers and sisters, do not abandon your heart. Take care of it. Wa alaykum bil lil wa kullu masain. And it said it's also for the Tijani people, uh, followers. It is imperative that every evening you gather in congregation to make the wazifa. Because to make wazifa in congregation, it is an obligation and it is a part of the rule of being in this path. And he says here, 
لمن وجد لأن لأن الوظيفة جماعة شرط فيها لمن وجد الإخوان غير معذور وهي وهي كفيلة بتحصيل كل إقليم. He said that is imperative for you to go to what the if for the murid of the Tijaniya. He said it is imperative for you to attend the wazifa every evening with your brothers and sisters in jama'ah if you have a jama'ah. Because it is a part of the shart of being a tijani. So long as you don't have any excuse. Now you may say, but what about me? You know, I don't go to the wazifa because I don't understand it or because I don't know the jahar to kamal yet or I don't know the salat al fat yet. That should never be an excuse for any one of you to go and mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know of the hadith mentioned in Bukhari and mentioned in Muslim about fada'ilu zikr, the, 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 the merits of making zikr, that there were a group of people making zikr and Allah sent down angels and when they returned to him, they said, what did you find my creation doing? He said, we found your creation praising you and worshipping you. And he said, have they seen me? Allah, he said, have they seen me? And they said, no. He said, and what if they would have seen me? They would have, the angels replied, they would have worshipped you more. And they would have praised you more, seeking your forgiveness. And he said, let, her, let it be known from this day on, I have forgiven that people all of their sins. And then one of the angels say, but ya Allah, there's someone who was there who wasn't a part of the vicar. He just walked by and listened to it. And Allah said, I forgive that person as well. Allahu Akbar. Look at the Rahmatullah. Look at Allah's mercy. Verily as he says that his mercy prevails or oversees his wrath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave that person even though he wasn't a part of the people doing dhikr just because he walked by them and listened to it. So my brothers that are Tijani who are having struggles learning how to do the wadifa, learn it, learn a line of it every day. Find someone who is able to teach you how to do the, how to recite, how to do these things so that you may be able to do it the right way. Do not stay away from it because you do not know it because you're missing out on benefit. And then one of the major benefits of the wazifa, Sheikh Ibrahim says, لِأَنَّهَا كُفَيْلَةٌ بِتَحْسِينٌ كُلِّ إِقْلِيمٍ He said that it is a protection. The wazifa it is a protection from all type of calamities for all type of people, for all of your whole city. Another benefit of the, of the wazifa, that Sheikh Ahmed Tijani mentioned that if you read it, Allah's protection will come down 40 miles. You're protecting 40 miles west, 40 miles north, 40 miles south, 40 miles east. Anywhere that that are in that 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 that, that are, um, parameter will be protected from Allah's wrath. So the wazifa, also he said that the wazifa also, whoever does it, el tazimuha jamaatul bidaman maulana rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said also that it has been guaranteed us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That لأنها لا ترك لا لا تترك من ذنوب من حضرها شاذة أو قاز أو فاذة. He said that also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had or had or guaranteed Sheikh Hamid Jani رضي الله تعالى عنه that anyone who attends the wazifa when he enters it and when he leaves it doesn't leave no sin on you. You are completely forgiven for anything that you have done by doing the wazifa. My father, Rahimahullah, when he was giving a class talking about the importance of wazifa, he said, Sayyidi Ali Sisi, the top student of Sheikh Ibrahim, who was made the Sheikh of the children of Sheikh Ibrahim by Sheikh Ibrahim himself, as he said, I have one student, I have one student, I am the Sheikh of one student, and he is Sayyidi Ali. But Sayyidi Ali is the sheikh of everyone else, of all of the of the talib, of the murids, and excluding my children. And all of them came to Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh uh, Sayyidi Ali for tarbiyah and ijazah from Sayyidi Ali. Rahimahullah. My father, who received ijazah from Sayyidi Ali, 
said that when one time he was walking to the wazifa and Sayyidi Ali was very sick that he couldn't walk but because of the wazifa and the, the merits of the wazifa that he they used to drag him to the wazifa meaning one someone would hold him under one arm and someone else would hold him under one arm and both of his feet would be dragging like this in the sand because of the benefit of the wazifa and he mentioned if you knew the true reality of wazifa you would come to it crawling so this demand from rasulullah wasallam, the, the guarantee that he gave to ahmed jani was anyone who performs the wazifa or by yourself what if you have the group to make it with the people you make it with the jama'ah that with you when you do it it will protect you from calamities and it will for you are forgiven from all of your sins except for shirk of course no matter how small it is oh father no matter how great it is and he said remember that the calamities are as great as our sins the calamities are as great as as the sins. So this time we are in, we're in a pandemic. Allah is descending His calamities down. Ask Allah for forgiveness in this time. Ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to have forgiveness and and to as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that our sicknesses are our sins and the remedy to our sins or to our sicknesses is to say Astaghfirullah. So have ask Allah for forgiveness for uh, our sins. Look at the story of Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the belly of the whale in the deep sea when his skin was deteriorating. Him as a prophet, as a messenger, what did he do at that time? How did he get out? What did he say? Ibn Kathir, when you read the story about why he was in the what happened to him while he was in the well anyway Allah sent him to a people and they refused him and out of anger he left the people for Allah to destroy them and when he got on the ship they threw him over and when he went into the water a well ate him and he was there for thousands of nights mentioned until his skin was deteriorated from the acids of the well and the, of the belly of the well what did he say? What was he? What did he cry? What did he say? Subhanaka, la, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. He said, there is no God but you, O oh Allah. I verily, glory be unto you, verily I am amongst the wrongdoers. And immediately Allah ordered the well to spit him out. And when he came out, he was he was on the shore of a beach, and Allah ordered, uh, commanded a tree to grow over him, so that the sun don't burn him. When he woke up, he went back to the town, and found the people. All of them repented to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for their sins. So, what is this? What is the story? It, the prophet wasn't patient, and he went against what Allah wanted him to do because of his anger. So he realized his sin wasn't was what not following or being patient with Allah's order. So the calamity that we experiencing, we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for forgiveness for our sins. That's why Sheikh Ibrahim said, "Wal masaibi bi qadr al-dhunub," that the calamities are as great or to the extent of the the sins. وتأمير سائر الأوقات أو جلها أو بعدها بذكر الله والصلاة على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بصلاة الفاتح لما أغلق. And you should spend most of your time, if not even all of your time, or even a part of your time, by doing what? By worshiping Allah through sending salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, especially with using صلاة الفاتح لما أغلق. And also walking and seeking to do good towards your brothers, increasing your love towards your brothers in the tariqah and in Islam itself. 
being to, 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 to doing what? Good to them. Making sure that you are in good standing with each other. Ask each other for forgiveness. If you may have done something wrong to someone, ask them for forgiveness. Go call them. Check upon our elders. Check upon the youth. Check upon those who are in need. Reach out to your brothers and sisters in Islam and in Tariqah. This is what will increase muhabba, love in between all of us. وَصَعِيُ فِي الْكَسْرِ الْحَلَالِ and working to seek a means of a of a of a of a, um, a lawful income. So see, Sheikh Ibrahim, letting letting is letting us know that we are not just about doing dhikr. We're not about people who are just sitting down doing askar. We are people of working, as Allah mentioned. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He never stops in all those who believe. But what did He say? وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and those who do righteous deeds. So Islam is not a tariqa, a, re, a religion of just sitting around. It is a religion of workers. So Sheikh Ibrahim is letting us know that we are not people who are just sitting down doing dhikr all day long. Of course, we don't incorporate dhikr in our busy day, but we surround our busy day around dhikr. So Sheikh Ibrahim said to what? Make sure that we establish our masjids with the prayers in which Allah ordained us, with the five daily prayers and the sunnahs and all of that. And then after that, mentioning Allah. And then after that, spending time making salah upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then after that, making sure that you are spreading love between your brother. And then after that, making sure that you are earning halal income, doing something to earn. Because if you don't have to give, how if you don't earn, how can you give? And as we know, the upper hand is always better than the lower hand. So we are people of work that we want to give. So for you to be able to give, then you must work. Sheikh Ibrahim said, a true man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it doesn't, uh, uh, um, it's not just for men, but when he says, Rijalullah, it is men and women. He said, the true man of Allah, either is of four types, and if you're not of these four types, you really need to what? Check yourself. He said, the first, the first type is someone who becomes a sheikh, and becomes a murabbi solely so that he may guide people from the darkness of ignorance and bring them to the light of their Lord. He said if he can't do this, then he should aspire to be a teacher. Someone who is someone guiding you to learn your deen, to learn about what is wrong and what is right, to learn the rules and regulations of being a Muslim and what governs you as a Muslim. And if he cannot do that, let him become someone who earns an income because he wants to help people. As the Prophet Muhammad mentioned, خير الناس أنفعهم للناس That the best man of mankind are those who are more beneficial to mankind. And if he cannot do that, then let him be someone who at least, and this is the worst, the least this level, is doesn't harm anyone. But let him be someone who aspires to what? Go and learn from people. He said, if, these, if you are not a part of these people, then you are not a part of the Rijalullah. And you should check yourself. So if you look at these things, you are giving each level. The Sheikh, he's giving his time. If you know how, if I remember when I used to aspire, I, was, I used to always say, I want to be like Sheikh Hassan. I want to be like Sheikh Hassan. But when I was under his tutelage, when I was watching him, he didn't have time for family. He didn't have time for nothing but Allah and, 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 and the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't have time for nothing. And I was like, wow, I don't think I'm ready for that. Teachers, they give themselves the time for the students who are seeking knowledge, learning and helping them learn, giving them understanding. People who work, go out and use their time, their hard earned sweat in whatever it is they are doing to give, to make sure people are eating, to make sure people are taken care of, to make sure people are, out, are going without need. They're giving. And even you know, the people who are learning are still giving. Because what? They're giving their time as well and to seek your knowledge to become better individuals. So, Sheikh Ibrahim who is telling us that this tariqah and we as Muslims should be what? People who work. 
وَسْحِبُ حِمَّةُ الشَّيْخِ فِي ذَلِكَ كُلَّهَا And go with the spiritual inspiration or spiritual zeal or assistance of the Shaykh and all of that. يَخْصُلُ الْمَرَادِ You will receive everything that you wish to have. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ And he is with you. حَيْثُ أَخْتَرْتُمُوهُ Whenever you think of him, he is with you. بِقُلُوبِكُمْ As well, he is with you within your hearts. وَذَلِكَ سِرٌ كَبِيرٌ And that is a great secret. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِمُحَبَّةِ الشَّيْخِ فَإِنَّهَا كُفَعْلَةٌ بِسْتَعَارَةِ الدَّارَيْنِ He said that is also, you should love Sheikh Ahmad Tijani because he is a protection in this life and in the hereafter. قَالَ سَيْدِ تَمَاسِينِ وَقَدْ بَلَغَ قُطْبَانِيَةُ فِي طَرِيقَةٍ عَلَى that Sheikh Tamasini and he is someone who has reached قُطْبَانِيَة he has reached the level of a saintly pole in this tariqa he said أَرَى اللَّهُ سَاقَ الْوَجُودِ مَا سَاقَ الْحِلَاقِ وَلَمْ يَسْلِمْ مِنْهُ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا مَنْ رَزَقَهُ مَحَبَّةُ الشَّيْخِنَا مَحَبَّةُ سَيْدِنَا he said that he has seen that everything in this world has went to destruction except for those who Allah has blessed to love Sheikh Ahmad Tijani. Now just to, to for, just not to go too deep into it, just to bring one clarification for the critics of the of the tariqah. Oh, they think that if you don't love the Sheikh, you are going to hellfire. You don't no 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 no. That's what we're saying to you is what what Allah said. Whoever loves his people, as Sheikh Ahmad Tijani mentioned in the hadith of the hadith of Qudsi of Allah, that whoever takes my wali as an enemy, then I declare war on that person. Sheikh Ahmad Tijani said, I understand from this that who also, whoever loves a wali of Allah, Allah will love you himself. So if you love the wali of Allah, Allah will also love you. And if you hate a wali of Allah, a wali is an intimate friend of Allah, Allah will also hate you. So this is the secret of loving the wali as he is the, the he is the, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, that he is the uh, seal of, meaning he has reached the highest level in sainthood that no one else will ever reach. So anyone that comes, not, not to say that there won't be saints after him. Of course there will, there are some today. Great saints. But to reach the level that he has reached, no one else will reach that level. That's why he is the Khatim al that he is the seal of all saints. Meaning, that level that he reached, no one else will reach it. So, loving the Shaykh, it is imperative to have deep love for your sheikh, to love him, as love is the secret in everything. You want to go to Jannah? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you will never enter Jannah until we will never have true belief until you truly love one another and you will never truly love one another until you spread peace amongst one another. So you must love each other for this to receive the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa alaykum bi sabri and also have patience in what the people of of uh, uh, the people of um, criticism or the critics say about you about this people of the tariqah and he says, so don't pay any mind to these people. Those people who are fighting the tariqa. Those people who are fighting you because you do zikr. Those people, don't pay any mind to them. He says, because, and also, remove yourselves from them. And remove, because whatever, their, being in their company is not helping you and is not guiding you to Allah. He says, because for madhuhum, for them to even praise you, and for them to even uh, uh, curse or ridicule you, and if they come to you, or if they abstain themselves from you, he said, it is the same. It is the same. If they praise you, if they curse you, if they come to you, if they abstain from you, it is the same. 
ولا نافع إلا هو سبحانه ولا خافد ولا رافع إلا هو سبحانه ولا مؤتي ولا مانع إلا هو سبحانه so Ibrahim is saying after he's saying to let us know that what he said if you don't if just so that you know that there is no one that can harm anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no one wala na'fi illa huwa that can benefit you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no one who can uplift you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no one who can debase you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no one who can give you or abstain from giving you but Allah himself subhanahu wa ta'ala if the murid remembers this and understands this then the critics whatever they say whatever they try to do whatever people try to uh, uh, discourage you you will never be faced by it because you know that Allah is the one who is in charge of all affairs and he mentioned the ayah ma yaftah Allah lil nasi min rahmatin fala mumsika laha fala mumsika laha wa ma yumsik fala mursila lahu min ba'dihi wa al-azizul hakim that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened for the servant and good no one can stop you from receiving it and if he was to hold it or refrain from giving it to you no one can help you to getting that and surely Allah is all wise and all knowing so he said hasiluhu he said, all of this that I have said, overall, حَاسِلُهُ أَنَّ مَنْ وَجَدَ اللَّهِ مَا فَقَدَ شَيْئًا وَمَنْ فَقَدَهُ لَمْ يَجِدْ شَيْئًا He said, everything that I have mentioned before this statement that I'm about to make, and summarizing what I want to say to you, is whoever has Allah has everything, and whoever loses Allah loses everything. That's, that's the main of this letter. This is the, the, what Sir Ibrahim wants us to learn out of all of this advice that he's giving us, everything that he's mentioning. The advice is what he said, حَاسِلُهُ أَنَّ مَنْ وَجِدَ اللَّهِ وَجَدَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَمَنْ فَقَدَهُ لَمْ يَجِدْ شَيْءٍ Whoever has Allah has everything, and whoever loses Allah has lost everything. And that's why he asks, may Allah give us Allah. Because if you have Allah, you have everything. And Sheikh Hassan used to say, May Allah give us Allah and may Allah give us Allah in our hearts and may Allah give us the dunya in our hands. He says, Because as long as you have Allah in your heart, no matter how much wealth you have in your hands, you won't see it because you only will have Allah in your heart. But if dunya is in your heart, Allah won't be there first of all, because Allah is Allah will never have be in a place, you know, where other than him will be. Never. So Sheikh Ibrahim used to say, May Allah give us Allah. And Sheikh Ibrahim said, May Allah give us Allah in our hearts. Sheikh Hassan said, May Allah give us Allah in our hearts and fill our hands with dunya. Because when you have Allah in your heart, that no matter how much dunya you have in your hand, you will only do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless our shayukh for their guidance. And may Allah continue to raise us as Muslims, as Iman and Islam, and Iman and Ihsan. So whoever has Allah, you have everything. And whoever has loses Allah, you lose everything. And he says, وَالَّذِي وَجَدَ اللَّهُ وَالَّذِي أَحْسَن And he says, and the one who has, has Allah, he is the best person. And he says, meaning it what? Immerse yourself following him inwardly and outwardly by following his orders and abstaining from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited to do. And he mentioned the ayah, in Allah ma'alladina taqaw, walladina hum muqsinun, that he Allah is with those who fear him, and he is with those who are the good doers. And in closing, he says, وَقَدْ جَدَرْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِذْنِ فِي قِرَاءَةِ الْأَوْرَادِ اللَّازِمَةِ وَغَيْرَهَا وَفِي تَلْقِينِهَا وَفِي تَعْلِيمِ الْإِلْمِ وَإِرْشَادِ الْخَلْقِ بِالنَّصِيحَةِ لَهُمْ بِالنَّصِيحَةِ لَهُمْ وَتَرْبِيَتُهُمْ بِآدَابِ الطَّرِيقَةِنَا الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْبَاطِنَةِ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْإِنْتِمَاسِ فِي الشَّيْخِ حَتَّى لَا تَرَى لِنَفْسِكَ تَأْثِيرًا مَا هُوَ الشَّيْخُ فِي الطَّرِيقَةِ شَيْخُ التِّجَانِ لَا غَيْرَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ He says here in closing, he says, and I am renewing all of you your tariqah and renewing you 
in uh, giving the weird. Maybe my mention his letter was this, was was um, uh, directed to his murid Hassan Jatara. So he said also, uh, I'm renewing all of your tariqa. I mean, um, he's also saying that he is renewing his permission in the tariqa and giving him permission to extend, give out the tariqa and teaching them knowledge and guiding the people with advice and giving them spiritual training and to learning about the adab of the tariqa inwardly and outwardly. Wa alaykum bil intimas and he's speaking now to to him as a muqaddam and as the sheikh. He says wa alaykum this is very important to the muqaddams in the tariqa and to the shaykh who are in the tariqa. Sheikh Ibrahim is saying that is very important that you understand don't see yourself in this. Because the only sheikh of this tariqa is Sheikh Ahmad Tijani. All of us are workers for him. You may be a sheikh in your own right, yes. But the only sheikh in this tariqa is Sheikh Ahmad Tijani. Don't see yourself. Don't see yourself as a sheikh. If people call you a sheikh, yes. Mashallah, you are a sheikh. But you know that you are not the sheikh of the murids. You know that you are a vice gerent of Sheikh Ahmad Tijani working for him, working for Rasulullah, establishing the deen, establishing iman, establishing ihsan. He says that a sheikh fi tariqatina, a sheikh Tijani la ghair. That the sheikh in this tariqa is Sheikh Ahmad Tijani, no one else. Wassalamu alaikum and may peace be unto you. وسلم لي على كل من لقيت بمن يتمنى لطريقتنا بمن ينتمي لطريقتنا قال مفسر حبيب حبيب الله يسك ومن معه مصطفى جام وغيرهم وعلى أخيك محبنا الحامد لكتاب الله دنودي جترة وعلى سائر حضرتكم كل باسم وعينه والسلام ويسلم عليكم جميع الإخوان وما ترى هنا بعدكم إلا الخير وما مات من الأعيان بعدكم إلا عمنا أبو بكر ماي محمد كم so he says here in closing, and I'm sending my prayers and peace and blessings and my greetings to all of you. So please give my salams to uh, uh, anyone who is a part of this tariqa and also specifically, especially the translator of the Quran, Habib Laisek, uh, and also those who are with him, Mustafa Cham, Mustafa Jam, and other than in the likings, and his brother. Uh, uh, and all of those who are with you I'm greeting each and every one of you wassalam and he'll said and I'm also greeting all of the brethren in the tariqa and just to know, also let you know that that there's nothing that happened after you have left here but good and no one has passed away except for uh, our uh, our uncle Abu Bakr May Muhammad Kum and he said that uh, there's the one who has passed away amongst the elders, except our our um, our um, uncle Abu Bakr Mbaye. So Alhamdulillah, that comes to conclude of this letter. So in closing, we want to make sure that we understand the advice that was given to us by Sheikh Ibrahim. As I mentioned, this letter starts off with Sheikh Ibrahim telling us to come to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even if you reach the highest of levels never stop your worship never stop it because when you feel that you have reached the highest level is when shaitan comes at you the hardest you understand the story of Abdul Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jailani he worshipped Allah he worshipped Allah worshipped Allah to the extent a big cloud came over him and said, and Abdul Qadir looked at him, he said, who are you? He says, the cloud said to him, I am Allah. I'm proud of you, my servant. 
and I have seen the worship that you have done and this day I don't need you to worship me anymore do as you like because you are blessed and you are pleased I'm pleased with you Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani said to him A'udhu Billahi min Shaitan al rajim He said I, I seek refuge from Allah from the accursed Shaitan How can Allah send a messenger the last messenger with a message and that is to worship him for eternity and then come behind him and deny his message so he knew that it was the shaitan so the closer you get to Allah know the harder your message the, your, your test will be so just be prepared the closer you reach to Allah the harder your message your, your test will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the goal is to what have Allah may Allah give us Allah and may Allah fill our do our hearts with Allah and fill our hands with this dunya. So when I, before I make the enclosing dua, I would also like for you all to go to our Nasr Ilm America channel, subscribe as all of our content will be there. And inshallah, Wednesday, I will be going over the second class about the importance of tariqa and the fundamentals of a sheikh, the fundamentals of the tariqa to Tijaniya. So please stay tuned and we have more upcoming events uh, this week. We will be putting it out. So on behalf of Nasr of America, we thank you and we would like to see you again next uh, class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih lima ugulik wa al-Khatim ilma sabak. Nasi al-Haqqi bil-Haqqi wal-Hadi ila suratika al-Mustaqimi wa ala alihi haqa qadrihi wa mikdali al-Azim. Salatun taftahu lana abwaabu rida'u wa taysir wa tukhluq anna abwaabu bishara ta'asir wa kunna abwaabu minu sallam. Antum mawlana fil amuna wa nama nasir. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzatah ma yizifun. Wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.